stupid raccoons are up right next to my wagon in the middle of the fucking day. You fucking crazy. Get down, stupids. You guys are way too brazen. Get out of here. It, there's no even fucking fruit up here. What the hell is your guys' problem? Hey, hey, hey. Get the fuck out. Oh. Idiots. Fuck raccoons. Stealing eggs and killing chickens. Good sheep. Alright, raccoons are back. Just fucking two hours later. Killing them. Alright. Oh god, come on guys. cheese penicillium growing on it also got some geotrichum growing on the bottom cut this into a fourth because a fourth is a huge meal I can divide these wheels up into six and they make adequate enough cheese for a meal but have a lot of cheese on this one. Cut my rind off. Not too thick of a rind on this one. Because I kept it mo more moist so it doesn't have a hard doesn't have a hard rind on it, as hard of a rind. Yeah. As usual, give the rinds to the chickens. Back in my evaporative cooler. I gotta try this, this looks really good. Good texture. Surprisingly a little bit dry. It's soft, but it's dry. That means that, and it's really subtle in its blue cheese flavor. It's got cheddar actually notes. That's really good. So the softness mixed with the dryness means that that I reduce the curds down to be very small, um, but then I I didn't press it. Very hard. My press only has 40 pounds of pressure, and so, um, yeah, I didn't press it. That's what those little mechanical holes are for. 
um, is from not pressing the curds together as hard as they possibly could be. Um, but then it's soft and didn't lose too much moisture uh, from, that was really good, from uh, keeping it in a humid enough environment. It's so interesting how it can be dry like a Parmesan, but not hard like a Parmesan. That is really tasty. I'm surprised it has like barely any blue cheese flavor for as much blue molds as it had on it. I don't love making cheese. They're so, so fascinating. All the little nuances that go along with it and its process to give you completely varied results each time unless you are doing monoculture bullshit like consumers do which they do primarily so that they can get a, a consistent product for sales but I'm not selling this I'm eating it and I prefer it to be different that'd be boring if all my cheeses were the same even if I intended to like you know make a cheddar this time and a blue cheese this, this next time this blue cheese cheddar combination is so much better and the, the variances in each one is just such a surprise. I love it. I love making cheese. Yeah, this one has a really thin rind. I didn't waste much at all on this. Now that I have this evaporative cooler, it's really starting to help out. It's helping me so that I don't have uh, as much waste and I'm having better cheeses. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Y'all don't even know. Y'all are freaking... All the rewilders are trying to rely solely on forage, which is not fucking possible. Or they're trying to rely on hunting and foraging, which is also not fucking possible, because there's not enough animals in the wilderness for even the rewilders to go back to it solely. They're just weak and warrioring it. Here I am, freaking day in and day out. Gorilla grazing, converting what's already there into a more nutritious food substance than any meat you could hunt. Jeez, look at that butter, dude. Can you guys see that? Look at all that butter. My sheep have, I mean, sheep milk has a higher butter fat content. It's like twice as high almost as uh, goat milk, but my sheep in particular, because I feed them so well, their milk is so fat. So fat. Oh my god. Thank you. Fat has nine calories per gram, whereas a gram of protein and or uh, carbohydrates only has four calories. So literally fat is more than twice as efficient of a calorie um, per gram than, uh, than carbs or protein. And half of your vitamins that your body needs are fat soluble so uh, protein don't aren't necessary in order to, to absorb and make more bioavailable your, your all your vitamins um, but yeah, half your vitamins need fat healthy fat too in order to uh, be bioavailable I throw my cheese rinds over to the chickens chick 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 chickens Chick 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 chickens. Chick 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 chickens. Yeah. Chick 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 chickens. Chick 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 chickens. That's how you train chickens. Good chickens. You're so well trained. That one brought a piece out. He said, "I'm gonna run outside with it where the mob isn't, so I can enjoy it." Good strategy. Smart chicken. All right. My all wild edible and cheese, cheap cheese lunch. I'm out of potatoes. I don't want to have bread again because I've been eating too much grain. So today 
I'm having nothing but wild edibles and cheese and milk. <laughs> Dank. Look at this. Ooh, the butter came out of the came out of the cheese and it's freaking. It's all, it's all buttery. Mmm. Just like asparagus. Oh my god. It's better than asparagus. Purslane stems. I got purslane, full purslane stems in there with the leaves. And then on this side, I have amaranth leaves and lamb's quarter. Cheesy amaranth leaves and lamb's quarter. Oh, and right here, I got on this very end, I have um, pieces of. A purslane root. This piece, this piece, and this piece are purslane root. Uh, I tasted them raw, and they they had slightly bitter flavor. So I'm interested to try them. Hmm. Wow. That's really good. Purslane roots. Look at all these flies. I want it. You can't have it. Mine. Man, this thing was filled up to the brim. Everything shrunk down. All right, time to put the chickens up. Looks like Joe Dirt is up on the door post again. He's been wanting to sleep out there, but there ain't no way I'm letting you sleep out here with these raccoons coming around. They already bit the, tried to bite the head off of the bigger rooster. You're a small rooster. They eat you alive, buddy. You silly Joe Dirt face. I love Joe Dirt. He's hilarious. Joe Dirt, yeah. You're so chill. You wanna go? And I'll carry you like I have to do every day. Good boy, Joe Dirt. Huh? Good boy, Joe Dirt. Who do you want to stand next to tonight, huh? Can you stand over here? There you go. So I left for two days to go scythe for another farm, and my farmer guy here had someone else agree to come close up the chicken coop, and they didn't. I forgot one night, and a chicken was eaten by a raccoon. It was one of the beige ones, the big fat ones. So, this is, this is another reason why it just makes more sense to have a live, a live-in uh, farmhand who it's much easier to, um, for them to be consistent with um, because they sleep right next to the chicken coop. <laughs> So it's just so much easier for them to uh, close up when, when it's time and open it up in the morning to maximize their chickens' forage and safety. Happy girl. Yeah. Oh, easy. Up, up, up. Good girl. Up, up. Good girl. Happy. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Good sheep. <laughs> 